Okay, I was told I should put my face on the screen more often. Uh, I feel like it's kind of a waste of space, but we'll see how long it lasts. At least you get to see my cool math hat. Okay, so let's pick this up. Um, we're looking at these 80 uh, male body fat data points. And we already looked at z-scores, and now we're gonna move on to looking at something called percentiles. Um, and I always tell this story in class about how I got a perfect score on my fourth grade math assessment test and still only got 97th percentile, and I was very frustrated by that. Uh, but the, the punchline of that story is that percentiles uh, measure the percent of data that is less than uh, that's less than the point you're looking at. Uh, so what happened when I got my perfect score was that three percent of the other fourth graders in Washington also got a perfect score. Uh, so I didn't beat them. I only beat the other ninety-seven percent. So percentile specifically, the percent of data uh, that's less than your points. Um, so let's take a look at these 80 dudes here with their body fat. And I'm just going to pick one out uh, kind of at random here. Um, let's say uh, this guy right here that's got 12.6% uh, body fat. Uh, let's look at his percentile. Um, so you'd want to say his percentile is let's figure out how many numbers are less than him. These are arranged in rows of 10. Uh, so there's 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So there's 26 people that have uh, body fat that's less than him. So 26 out of the 80 are less than him. And that's all the percentile is. That's his percentile, although Usually we turn it into an actual percent. So 26 divided by 80, let's get the calculator back. Um, let's do 26 divided by 80. Uh, that's 32.5. So his percentile is, is the uh, 32.5. percentile. Um, and sometimes they'll round that to the nearest whole number, so you could call that 33. Uh, but it's fine to have a decimal in there too. Um, so let's take a look at another one. Um, and let's take a look at maybe this 21.7, uh, this guy right here. Um, so we need to figure out his percentile, and his percentile is going to be, uh, there's still going to be 80 on the bottom, 80 total. And we, now we just need to get the number of data points that are less than his. Uh, so let's see, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rows. So there's 50, 51, 52. And be careful not to count that one right there. That one's not less. That one's a tie. Uh, so it doesn't get counted. It's not less than him. Uh, so it's only uh, 52 divided by 80 for that 21.7. And 52 divided by 80, uh, 65. So he's in the 65th percentile. Uh, let's see, 65th percentile. Oops. Uh, so you can write it that way. You can write 65th percentile. Um, the shorthand for that is a P sub 65. That means the same thing. Uh, and speaking of notation, uh, so that would be the P 65 percentile. This would have been the P 32.5 or possibly the, the 30 third percentile if we had rounded a little bit. Um, there's a alternate word here besides percentile that we're going to use. Um, which is quartile. 
And quartile is kind of what it sounds like. It's quarter, one quarter of the way through. Uh, so they'll talk about quartiles and they'll talk about the first quartile. And the definition of that first quartile is just exactly the same thing as the 25th percentile. 25% of the way through is one quarter of the way through. And they'll also talk about the second quartile, which is the same thing as the 50th percentile. It's exactly halfway through. And by the way, just to stretch us a little bit more, uh, we have yet another name for the 50th percentile or the second quartile. Uh, that's exactly what the median is. That's halfway through a data set. And then we'll have the um, third quartile as well, which is the 75th percentile. Um, we could talk about the fourth quartile, which is the 100th percentile, which um, and the zeroth quartile or the zeroth percentile, sort of the top and the bottom of the list. But those usually aren't as interesting. We're usually more interested in a quarter of the way through and, two, and halfway through and, and three quarters of the way through. Um, so let's actually go ahead and figure out the second quartile or the 50th percentile. Uh, we haven't done it this direction yet. So far, we've only pointed at a point on the data set and said, uh, what percentile does that have? But now let's do it the other way around. And let's say, let's do, say, what is the 50th percentile? And that should be the point that has 50% of the data below it. And we know with this list of 80, that we basically want the first 40 numbers below and the other 40 numbers to be above. So we need to be this 17.6 and this 18.3. Um, those are actually the two points that are closest to being the middle. Um, and the question here is really which one do we want? And we know the deal because we know how medians work which is also the 50th percentile, is we actually go halfway between those two. So we truly have a data point that's got half the data below it and half the data above it. Um, so we'll go just like we've always done with the median. Uh, we'll go halfway between 17.6 and 18.3. Uh, so calculate it one more time. 17.6 plus 18. 0.3 is that divided by 2 is uh, 17.95. Uh, so the 50th percentile here is 17.95. Um, we're going to do a couple more examples of finding percentiles and quartiles in the next video. But I did also just want to point out that your book um, has a really nice flow chart on page 116 here, uh, here, and it kind of walks you through the whole process of finding percentiles uh, for any given situation. So we'll take a look at a couple more examples in the next video.